Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 333. Once again, we're continuing along with the 2v2 June tournament. Which, yes, I know is July 4th. I don't really care. Not my problem. I wasn't the one who delayed it by a week, but we are now playing the June tournament. Anyhow, we are going on to the winner's finals. Now, Dying Front Kane, Orphelius, and Skazi are also playing the game simultaneously. We're going on to the winner's finals, which will be, of course, followed by the loser's finals, and then the grand finals, which you can't see my cursor. So, winner's finals, loser's finals, grand finals. And then grand finals, too, if the loser's bracket gets up 2-0, or 2-1. Anyhow. So, this is going to be on, first match at least, on Quicksilver. Most of the players are here. Kloon is not here yet. Not sure where they are. Seriously, where's Kloon? Because Kloon is watching this game right now. But we are not. Because I prefer to watch the winner stuff until the winner stuff is that winner's final isn't done. Just typically it's better. I mean, okay, I know Dying Friend Kane or Phileas and Scotty is also going to be a good match. But it's probably okay. Although I suppose on the other hand, I could have gotten Kane in for casting if I watched that. Ah, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Kane will probably ask for casting halfway through this anyway, so probably be able to get them in on game two. Where the heck is Kloon? Yeah, whatever. Once Kloon gets in, then we'll be on Quicksilver, which should be a fairly quick map, I think. It's a fairly small one. I mean, it's, I think, 10 by 10 but it's not got a whole lot of metal on it. Oh, 12x12, sorry. But it's not got a lot of metal on it. And the arrangement of the map makes it... I mean, it's possible to defend, so it can kind of become a slog. But it's also fairly open. And there's a couple of choke points in the center, but there's also a lot of ways around. So it's one of those things where it'll probably end up being focused at a choke point, and then as soon as the choke point breaks, then it'll break really hard. And I'll just go all the way back to the main base, or go all the way up to the ramps. We'll see how that works out, though, once Kloon decides to actually start playing. There we go. Okay, Kloon's now in. Good. Kloon has joined. We can get going. Well, okay, Kloon needs to drink or something. So yeah, this should be a fairly even match, I think. Yeah, it's kind of a finals before finals. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw these two teams in the grand finals. Like, whoever loses this is probably going to go up. I mean, between Dying Front Kano for the Eskazi, it'll probably be fairly even, but it is best of one. Which means I'm not quite sure how it would work. Dying Front and Kane might end up having a bit of a cheese on that. The map... What map are they on? They are on... Okay, yeah. This could go either way. They're actually on Altier Crossing. Wait, really? No, that's us. We're on Altier Crossing. Wait, hang on. What's going on? H? No, H is on Altier Crossing. We're on Quicksilver. Alright, got that sorted. sorted. One sec. So yeah, they're on Altier Crossing. That's pro... That could go either way. That really could go either way. That is such a cheese map. Wait, why is the same in-game? Oh, right. Anyway, yeah, I forgot to exit the previous match. Let's get back to this. Yeah, winner's finals. Oh, people watch the tournament. Why aren't people watching the tournament? Why do, why do 0k players hate esports so much? Or not so esports, but you know what I mean. Wait, no, do they? I don't know. I can't tell. Maybe it's just the ubiquitous chat client hates me so much. Or hates showing things actually correct so much. Well, anyway, we're on to winner's finals. And we are about to see what should be a pretty entertaining match. 
So yeah, Quicksilver, like I said, is kind of small, or well, not necessarily small, but it's well, it's one of those maps that. Wait, why is it? How is it still slow? It must be CPU bound. I just got a brand new graphics card. I don't see how it could be slow at this point. It's gotta be a CPU bound thing. Like just all the grass or something is just having thousands of draw calls. Like for every single piece of grass. I don't know if they instance these actually. I kind of doubt it in fact. I don't know. It'd be nice if they instance the grass drawing, but given the frame rate on this, I don't know. Anyhow, Google Frog going for a quick gunship start. Lori and Clone. Okay, Clone going for heavy tanks, more reliable. Brass is a shader? Okay, well that's good. But just because it's a shader doesn't mean that it isn't also a bunch of draw calls. Or a geometry shader and thus output bound and therefore still kind of slow. Like, I don't know how many draw calls are going on right now for this. I just know that my beefy graphics card is not going to be the thing that's causing the problem. It's going to be the CPU, and that's going to be because of the draw calls. Or it's going to be the pipeline between CPU and GPU, which is probably because, as far as I know, they're still insisting on using immediate mode and display list in the engine and not switching over entirely to vertex array objects, despite the fact that that is the way of the present, if not the recent past. Definitely the present. Anyway, shop talk on OpenGL aside, Google Frog setting up gunship. Acronym not quite set up yet anything. Where's Lori? Okay, going being a bit safer, but still. Going for the quick opening with aggression. Is Lori going to set up? What are they going to set up here? I mean, there's bots. This map actually supports pretty much anything. It supports jump bots. Usually you see jump bots, vehicles, occasionally gunships. Sometimes cloaky. Can be odd. Ah, seriously, sound bugs? Now. Arr. I don't think you need to reconnect. I'm pretty sure there's just a widget you can use, but okay, whatever. If that works, then that should work. So give it a couple minutes. Acronym should be back. Yeah, this is game one on Quicksilver. So this map... I mean, this is a actually much more metal... Okay, a lot more metal than I thought it had. But yeah, this map is one where basically these two choke points matter a great deal. There is a path along the water here. Though I believe it does deal damage. The water, I think, deals damage. I'm not sure if it still does. That might have been removed in a widget update or something for 0k specifically. But anyway, yeah, so th there are these paths, but for the most part, these two choke points are key. And if either of these falls, then yeah, falling back from there, that often happens. There's also the ramp as well, but this map tends to focus a lot more on this area here and occasionally this lower section and the equivalent over to the north. Not quite symmetric, though. I'm a little surprised at that. Wait. Yeah, it isn't symmetric. It's very nearly radially symmetric, but the metal map isn't. Or at least parts of it aren't. Looks like this area here is more or less symmetric. This area here is not symmetric. Not sure what's going on there. But yeah, it's not quite symmetric. And a blast wing opening very quickly trying to get some damage dealt. And yeah, jump out factory at the low ground. And Cloaky Bot Factor, the high ground for Akron. This is the first time this tournament we have seen bots as a main factor. I don't know, Amphibs are used early on. Cloakies, definitely. The first time we've seen Cloakies at all. Yeah, Amphibs were used early on. Am I going to blow up the metal structure or what? There we go. So at this point, Clone and Lowry pulled back a little bit. Not that much, though. I mean, they're at a slight economic disadvantage, but not too much. They'll be only a small thing. I mean, they'll they'll bounce back fairly quick. They have the reclaim. They have they only lost a bit of metal. I mean, it's early on, so it's going to be a slight blow. But there's probably enough to be able to harass back from this. However, neither player, neither of the blue team players, has gone down to the low ground. So this Kodachi doesn't really have much to deal with at this point. On the other hand, Lori is somewhat vulnerable, though. Admittedly, it was vulnerable to Blastwing, so they were as vulnerable with or without the low ground. And we're seeing a drop. Are we seeing a warrior drop? I mean, we see the Valkyrie coming up. We I don't see any warriors coming up, though. Is is that going to go for this? Not sure why. What's going on? 
This is really weird. Why are they not building warriors? Are they just focused entirely on building up economy first? Oh, I see. Never mind. I am expecting the wrong thing. That's just for... That's for increasing expansion speed. That's not for anything else. Okay, I honestly expected a warrior drop. I... I've never seen someone use it to just cart workers around. It's a good idea, I just have never seen anyone use it for that. And this ramp has been ticked up. No, well, there wouldn't be an equivalent here. There might, no, there wouldn't be a scuttle this early on in the game. I mean, there might be, but it's unlikely. And an early Archangel 550 metal being poured into a unit that's not going to be useful on anything but the rapiers and the rapiers themselves are not being invested heavily into. From time to time, yes, but at this point, Basically, switching over to Rapiers and forcing the Aquanim- sorry, forcing the Archangel switch? That's bought Google Frog and Aquanim a lot of time. Hey, at this point, Clone and Lori are using so much metal just to build up that one Archangel, which isn't going to do too much in terms of overall value. But yeah, this is going to be quite powerful. I mean, Aquanim and Google Frog are just going to be able to take something of an economic lead, if not entirely take an economic lead. I'm a bit surprised it hasn't shown a larger... Oh, no, I guess that's true. They haven't they haven't changed their lead too much. But still, that... I mean, this area here has three, plus three more metal down here, which Clone and Larry are not taking. And like I said, that Archangel is... Is it even done yet? No! Another five seconds left before that Archangel's done. But yeah, at this point, all this is happening without any threat of being harassed. And the Rapiers are still damaging stuff. I mean, two Rapiers are still doing a lot of damage, enough to make it worth it, even though the Archangel has just come online. Just now we have the Archangel, but who cares? The Rapiers have done their job. If for nothing else than making Pyros come out at four minutes at the earliest? And, okay, here's the Warriors. Are we going to see a Warrior drop? I don't think so. Looks like the Valkyrie is entirely used to cart this one Conjurer around, which has actually done a pretty good job. So at this point, Aquanim is going to be just having to consolidate this section here, defend that. Lori taking the south section though, with that with that one Archangel, it's going to be hard to get into. The Archangel just about to get to the Rapiers. And there it is, that first stack coming in there, and the Rapiers forced back. Not fast enough though, those Rapiers cannot get out of the way quickly enough. Wow, that is a long range. Like a thousand or something, I think, on that. Yeah, 1,040 Elmos for the autocannon. 840 for the laser. And we do see one warrior. Not exactly a intimidating drop, but hey, it's a warrior. In the right spot, without much in the way of defenses. Without much of much in the way of defenses. I cannot pronounce, I'm sorry. Without much in the way of defenses. That is going to be Well, Zeus and Warrior. Okay, that's a bit better. That should work. But now we already have about three or four pyros. Two. Not, sorry. Three, just two. Two pyros, moderator coming online, and the Archangel is still denying pretty much the entire south side of the map to anything that flies. Such as Blast Wings, for example. Or these two drop Valkyries. They have Warrior and Zeus. Good mix, actually, especially with the pyros coming in. That should be able to deal with most things. Now, at this point, though, it's probably going to run into the commander first, and the Blast Wings going in for the scouting run, trying to figure out probably both what they can hit and what can be hit by the drop. And yeah, it looks like these Blast Wings, are they going to move in? Yes, they will. They will be able to get rid of one of the metal extractors. They're going to go for the other one as well. Uh, only takes out one, though. Blast Wings are a tricky unit to use. At the same time, we do see Clone advancing towards the northwest side of the map. And the drop has dropped. Okay, there we go. The warrior is down. Warrior is down. Zeus is down. And the entire main section... I mean, it doesn't matter at this point. The Archangel's too late. Defender getting rid of both Valkyries at the same time due to their proximity to each other. A little unfortunate, but hey, that worked. However, getting rid of the warrior too, that is far more unfortunate. And this factory is like one shot away from dying. Ah, oh, but Aquanim is not focusing on the factory. If they hit the factory, it's dead. But no, they didn't. They did not hit that factory. They could have killed the factory. They could have taken out the Reaper as was being produced. But now they won't. They'll probably lose the game because of that. I'm not kidding. They'll probably lose because that draw failed. 
I mean, they already invested a lot into that drop. They've... They've gone... And the southwest, southeast side is basically dead. The chat's just going nuts about it. Oh, okay, for 0k chat. But yeah, that's the thing. This... This factory would have died. Should have died, really. But the Zeus went for the Lotus, which normally is a good idea. But when the Zeus is so close to death, when it's a Zeus... Actually, no, not for a Zeus. Not for a Zeus. For the Warrior, yes. For the Zeus, no. But especially when the factory is at one shot away from death. It's... It's basically done. Like, at this point, the southeast side is totally lost to Akuna Magufa. Magufa having switched over to Jump Pod as well. That's the land factory. The Jack will be nice. That'll help. But still, Clone and Lori have taken their territory. Akuna and Frog were clearly starting out in a very aggressive tenor. They, they were trying to go for an aggression play the entire time. That was pretty much what they were trying to do, is just beat Clone and Lori as soon as they can. Just do not let them build up. Do not let them get to late game. Don't let Clone get their defenses up, because Clone, Clone has been... I mean, Clone's a bit rusty, probably, but they're still very, very good at keeping their units alive, or typically have been good at keeping their units alive. So that is something that has to be dealt with, but at this point, Lodri has pretty much taken the southeast. This expansion in this section here is still under Google Fox control, so at least, I mean, blue team's control in general. So that's good, but even then, it's still going to be a bit of a problem to try to work from. I mean, Clone, they have the reclaim to work from over here. They've, they have repaired the factory. It's full health. I mean, that's the thing. It's... That's really unfortunate, because now, I mean, my point about the losing game was the Reapers. Now the Reaper gets up, and that's a huge amount of pressure that can be exerted anywhere they like. Granted, the Jacks are going to get in the way from that, but actually the Jacks are going to be a problem. But 5,000 health each? Yeah, 5,000 health each. Okay, not quite necessarily that bad. Bit of a problem, but, you know, it's, it's manageable. It could work. Still, that is going to be hard. Like, getting rid of a Reaper is a slog to do. However, with the main base so well defended, the early aggressive play... Once again, another Blastman coming in! I guess they wanted to see if they can get rid of the factory, but no, that's way too late. Like, that's two or three minutes too late. Caretaker kill was nice, though. That should help a bit. I mean, Clone wasn't really in danger of accessing because of that. But yeah, that should be nice. That should help. That'll be good. But at this point, though, I mean, Banjo's coming in, getting rid of the Reapers. Oh, sorry, getting rid of the Rapiers. The Reapers coming in, getting rid of everything on the ground. The naming system getting rid of my ability to properly commentate the game. And the Eastern Front... Actually... No, it's... It's Lodi's. Hey, Google Frog and Acronym are so contained at this point. I'm a bit surprised these two... These Medley Stratus have been allowed to live far longer than is reasonable. But that's probably because there aren't... Oh, no. Looks like Gwen and Lori are not aware of them. Their radar does not contain any knowledge of those particular metal extractors, so yeah. And that Reaper, is it going to go down? It might. Well, yeah, it might. I don't know. It's falling in. No, it's falling back. I think this is... If it's going to go down, it's going to take all of the glaives down with it. And all but one. Two. All but two. Okay. Nope, one. I was right the first time. I was exactly right the first time. All but one Glaives goes down to take out a Reaper. And it's worth it. <laughs> that was a dozen Glaives. I'd say that's totally worth it. That was still less cost than the Reaper. Although, admittedly, it's only worth it unless this happens. The Sharpshooter can hit. What? Akunum, what are you waiting for? The, the Sharpshooter needs to attack that commander. Like, right now. If not sooner. Although we aren't playing Akron, so now if not sooner is not exactly a meaningful phrase. But yeah, as soon as it can. There we go! It misses. Horribly. Hits a defender. I don't think Akinem had vision there. No, they didn't. They had radar coverage. They didn't know what to hit. And Spider Factory coming up. Interesting. The Spider Bot Factory is coming up. Oh, what? I can't select? I have no idea how this works. Anyway, Spider Bot Factory is coming up. So at least that's something. I mean, clone right now, heavy tank. Actually, why are they going for the spider factory? I guess crab. 
Or possibly they're trying to go for the spider jumpy matchup, try to get the Venoms out so they can stop the Pyros, but at this point, they don't have to worry about Pyros, they have to worry about Jax, so Crab is the only thing that comes to mind. Or possibly Venoms to get rid of the Glaives, that's another option. But no idea yet, and another Reaper getting heavily threatened, but not so much. No, too much support, the Banisher is way too much to deal with. And Fire Ryan. What are you talking about, Anarchid? Not sure what Anarchid's talking about there. And Google Frog attempting to try to kill stuff with a rapier corpse. It did not work. Close the solar plant, but that's about it. Anyway, this contain. Okay, now they finally got rid of one of the metal extractors. Haven't seen both of them. Oh, okay. Firewalker. Yeah, right. Okay, that's what they were talking about. Calling Firewalker or Wolverine. Okay, no, apparently they haven't told Clone about the Firewalker. Although Clone's not playing Jumpy. Lori is. And Lori's also getting a Strider, getting a Dante. First Dante we've seen all tournament. Although admittedly it's also the first time we've ever seen a player reliably go above plus 30, so that kind of makes sense. Actually above plus 40 in this case. At this point though, man the Pyro's coming in here, they're just gonna come in here, they're gonna jump over, they're gonna rip apart everything here. There's the jump! There's the ripping apart of everything on the top section of the base. One of them is going to go down to the sniper. No, it missed. Ouch. That is extreme. That is just that's game. The Dante isn't even necessary. This is already game. The glaives are all going to die. If not to the pyro, then to the far forest fire the pyros are making. Yeah, the glaives are just done. The gunship plant is is it done? It should be done. Nothing's there to repair it. It will go down. And yeah, Google Frog and I can be throwing in the towel. Gunship plan goes down, and then afterwards, everything else, because Clone and Lori take it. What did I say? What did I, that, that one Zeus shot, those Reapers causing all those Glaives to die, not the Glaives to be used in the first place, rather than just continuing along with... Actually, no, that was Cloakie from the beginning, so yeah. I guess continuing along with Warriors, or continuing along with Zeus's. I mean, a lot more Zeus. Zeus would have fought off those Pyros, no problem. But yeah, this is kind of annoying. That was, man, that one rate, that one shot, that one Zeus shot, so simple. Oh well. We're going to move on to game two, and it's going to be the choice of Google Frog and Aquanim. And I'm, are we going to see Inculta Wet? That's what I want to know. Are we going to see Inculta Wet? Because Inculta Wet is a map that they often go for, and it looks like we do have our third place, and Dynefriend and Kane are in Losers Finals! Okay, now I don't feel so bad about not letting Kane commentate this because I went for this first. Because Dynefriend and Kane have gone into Losers Finals, and it looks like at this point Google Frog and Akinem are going to be fighting them in the Losers Finals, but we'll see, Lordy and Clone, they might lose the next game, it's not set in stone yet. But we'll see, but yeah, Orphelius and Skazi got fourth place. Dynefriend and Kane up to third place. Now I'm kind of curious what happened, but oh well. And we're going to Altier Crossing on this game too, so this should be over either over quickly or game three quickly. But yeah, that is going to be that's going to be winners finals game two, which geez, if it lasts longer than five minutes, I'll be surprised. Because I'm guessing they're going for LTR Crossing because they kind of want to cheese out. They want to make sure that... I mean, they were already trying to cheese out in Game 1. They were trying to get that early aggression, trying to get the early blast wings, trying to get the drop. I mean, they went for a drop. You don't go for a drop unless you're trying to go for a really quick early win. Oh, hey, Dancer. Dancer's in chat. They just mentioned who they are. Hello. But anyway, you don't go for a drop unless you aren't certain about a late game win. That's the only reason you go for that sort of play. And Google Frog and Aquaman went for that sort of play. And they almost got it, too. So close. But yeah, not quite, unfortunately. Did not quite manage to pull it off. That was pretty well defended to begin with. Like, that was... That was a well defended base. I mean, that would have gotten rid of the factory, though. That's still, that's the thing. That factory. Had it gone down, no Reapers. Would have bought them at least a minute. And that would have probably been enough time. I mean, they could have gone for another attack, or just... The fact that they would have had to worry... And at that point, they already had bought themselves a lot of time by forcing the Archangel construction. I don't know if that was necessarily intended. 
but they did. And they bought themselves a lot of time. They are able to expand a great deal, basically completely unmolested. And that was entirely because of the fact that they didn't have to worry about Pyros early on. But it also meant they didn't have the Zeus's early on, but it did give them opening for that drop. But it's like, that drop, I don't know, that was the biggest mistake. Anyway, on to game two. Because that is the game after game one. That is how numbers work. Or so I've been told. I've been led to believe that numbers work in a consecutive fashion using a successor function. I could be wrong though, it's entirely possible that there is a completely different set of numbers that I should be using instead, for whatever reason. But I am going to be using just ordinal integers from this point on, at least for these. Actually, I suppose I'm using both cardinal and ordinal integers. Hmm. Flexibility. So we have Shieldbot opening up. Okay, this is Shieldbot and Light Vehicles. What would you do with that? Shieldbot, not unsurprising, not surprisingly, you often see. Not surprising you go for Shieldbot in this map. Either Dirtbag Rush or Bandit Rush, or possibly Dirtbag Bandit together. Maybe something for... Fel I don't think I'm going for Felon Play. Felon Play is a little bit late game for this. Ah, Wolverine and Felon. That's the idea. That Thanks, Dancer. Dancer pointed that out. Pointed out Dancer before in other games. Dancer, we've seen before, is a very defensive player. They're a team player. They know how to play teams. They're a very defensive player, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, I have one replay where they really show how to play defensively. And it looks like Lori going for Pyro Bandit. Yeah, Lori and Clone going for Pyro plus Bandit. And Google Frog Acronym going... Well, they're going to scout out, but yeah. Well, are we going to see World... All we're seeing Wolverines! Are the Wolverines coming up? We're seeing Reclaim at first, of course, because this is Altier Crossing, and you always start Altier Crossing with Reclaim, because there is just so much Reclaim. There is... Yeah, 500 metal easily, and all the energy you'll need for most of the game. Just right outside your main base. That's the thing. So we are going to see a lot of reclaim. We haven't seen what the strategy is yet. Just the reclaim part. Neither hand has been tipped. What are we seeing? Lori coming in here, and... Well, that is going to be fairly useful. So it looks like at this point, clone... Going to set up Solo Collector, going to set up... What are they setting up here? Actually, fairly early energy, come to think of it. But, you know, they want a bit of constant energy. You don't want to reclaim everything. Still, at this point... Yeah, we are seeing... Oh, whoa, early Felon! Wow! Okay. That is surprising, actually. That is very surprising. I probably shouldn't be totally surprised, but yeah... Wolverine and Felon was the strategy being mentioned. So we see the Felon part. We, I guess, are seeing some support units, the Scorches and Levelers, just to make sure that anything that happens in terms of Wolverine is actually safe. And of course there are the Convicts, because we need the Convict for Shield Support. And that's what we're going to see. Mass Convicts for Shield Support, Felon, and Kloon going for this as well. Although what the Jump Out Factor does to support this is entirely Pyro from the looks of it. And yet, there's the Wolverines. Okay, you called it, Dancer. You called it. It is Felon Wolverine indeed. With a bit of south side support, just to make sure that nothing goes too south. Because anything going far south is going to be taken care of by that leveler. At least, bandit-wise. And we'll see. Is this going to be game? Are we going to have a 2-1? Are we going to have an even match? Or a relatively even match, at least. In this tournament, at some point. Or not. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. But hey, we might get to a 2-1. We might get to Game 3. It would be the first Game 3 of the tournament so far. That'd be kind of nice. Although, on the other hand, it's also only been two hours and we're already at Winner's Finals. We have, like, possibly only two rounds left. But I prefer a long, entertaining match than a short... If... Bo I, I prefer... If it's going to be long, be entertaining, than if it's going to be short and one-sided. Make it entertaining. If it's long, I don't mind. But this match, this match isn't doing too bad. This match is keeping me somewhat entertained. I'm curious how it's going to go. Although the convicts are out of range of that felon, that should not happen. That really shouldn't happen. Especially since that's the only thing keeping the one felon from winning. And there we go. Clone's felon goes down to 
Aquanim's Felon, because Aquanim's Felon has actual shield support, and Clone's Commander trying to comp burst it to death. Is it gonna die? No, it's not! Clone's Commander with 57 health left! What the heck just happened? Well, that's that, I guess. I mean, Clone's Commander will... they'll live. They'll get out of there. They have auto repair, don't they? No, they have radar module. Okay. And Wolverine... Oh, the Wolverine might finish it off! No, no it won't. It's getting repaired directly. It's not getting finished off at all in any easy way. Where is these convicts going? Why are these convicts going forward? What the heck is wrong with them? Stay back. Build defense. Yeah, good good plan. Good plan. That's a guy, That's an idea. And there we go. Wolverine's taking it out. Clones Commander gonna go down in midair as Aquadims goes down as well because everyone's commander has to die. So commander for a commander. That was not the best chain. That was not the best exchange. And it looks like Aquanim and Google Frog are on the back foot. Because Clone didn't really need that commander very much. They had enough. And this is also also inside of Clone's territory. Lori taking everything because Lori's taking everything. But yeah, Clone and Lori can just take all this. They can reclaim. They have a thousand metal worth of commander reclaim. Plus another 400 metal worth of other stuff. Yeah, this... This is came if anything is. Google Frog's commander about to go down as well. At least heavily threatened by Pyros. Three pirates coming in here. The thugs should be of some use to defend. Actually, the thugs will shout. No, okay, they'll shoot them off. They'll shoot them off. Pyros aren't going to be completely dominating here, but this is a bad place to be. This is a really bad place to be. At this point, I would say that this is probably... If not game, it'll be the reason why game. But I don't think it's quite game yet. Mostly because at the center of the map, we don't have... I mean, the Jacks aren't really doing much. The Pyros aren't really doing much. Nothing is really attacking the center. And the south side is getting just Wolverine set up. So at this point, both players are staying kind of even. But still, Akinem's economy is so weak that... What am I saying? Google Frog's basically carrying this at this point. Yeah, this is going to be very tough to get back from. A few good engagements, a few good raids along the north side of the map might be able to stabilize them somewhat. But even from a stability point, they'd still have to rebuild and build a larger army. And then get back. If they kill both of these jacks, these are fairly expensive. 1,200 metal. That's most of Lori's... That's, I think, all of Lori's army. Or just about all of Lori's army. So if these jacks go down, that's going to be huge. Especially if the north side goes down as well, which it it is. The north side's going down. This harassment's working out fairly well, though not the best direction. I don't think Google Frog had any awareness. No, they did not. They have a decent amount of radar coverage, but not enough awareness of that one section. But at this point, they should be able to attack... If they attack the north and go south from there, that should help stabilize. That will reduce the economy quite powerfully. The thing about team games is that reclaim matters a little bit less than it does in 1v1. Not much less. It's still key. It is still massively important. And clones reclaim here, that is... I mean, they've already reclaimed Akron's commander. That is... That is extremely important. You need that. But, because of the fact that metal and extractors is shared between players, every extractor killed... That doubles the impact, because it impacts both players equally. However, that's also a moot point, because the extractor's not being attacked at all. In fact, Google Frog is being pushed back to their extractors, which look like they're probably going to go down. At least one of them's going to go down. This one over here is dead. This one down here, probably also dead. Nope, never mind. Pyros need to escape. Though the Jacks coming along the side should be able to kill it, no problem. Yeah, Clone and Lori are just running roughshod over Google Frog and Aquanim's territory. Kinda sucks that Aquanim lost their commander. That was a real blow. I and mean, losing the Felon was probably the bigger blow. But the commander loss meant that Reclaim Metal is just... Yeah, both were bad. So, that is game. That is game match. We are gonna be moving on to Losers Finals. 2-0 for Clone and Lori. Moving on to Losers Finals, where we're gonna see... And hey, no crash that time. Where we are going to see Dying, sorry, Dying Friend and Kane against Google Frog and Aquanim. Which we have already seen. So a repeat.